Hi, I'm Mr. Kane with SeniorSafetyAdvice.com and today I wanted to talk about some housing options for seniors. As you can see, I'm sitting outside my home. Um, trucks are going to be coming by, so I hope the uh, sound is, is going to be good on this video. Um, I live in a cluster home community, uh, even though it's not a 55 plus or senior specific community. A lot of retirees do live here because the homes are close to each other. The HOA takes care of the yard. Uh, so we do have somewhat of a yard, but not very big. So it's very low maintenance. It's close by to walking trails and shops and restaurants. So it's a perfect environment for uh, aging in place. Um, I wouldn't say the homes are necessarily uh, modified for that, but you can certainly do that uh, once you move in. But uh, if you can see the homes behind me are not too far apart and there's a nice walking area. But there are at least 10 different housing options that are available for seniors. It, you know, it used to be years ago that you either aged in place in your own home or you moved in with a family member, usually an adult child, or you went to an assisted living facility or a nursing home. But nowadays there are several other options available, so I wanted to go over uh, many of those because I know, especially in this time now, October 2020, it seems like a lot of uh, people are thinking about moving and downsizing and since 10,000 to 12,000 people a day are turning 65 here in the USA and across the world as well, uh, the numbers are very high, then it, it makes sense to think about where you're going to age in place, where's the safest and best place for you. All right, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, if you like the video, click a like, give us your comments, let us know what you think, and if you have any other options of senior living. All right, so let's go over the 10 different um, places that I talk about in our article, which there will be a link to below. Um, the first one are granny pods. These are also known as backyard bungalows and accessory dwelling units, which sounds like something an engineer put together. But basically it's a tiny home or modular type of home or a custom built home that is built on, in the backyard or side yard, uh, prop, you know, property of a family member usually. It's a great way for seniors to live close by to their uh, adult children, but yet still have their own independent living. Um, the pros to that are that it's customizable, of course, because you are building your own home. Uh, you keep someone closer to the family, of course, and you don't have to worry about pets because you're not living under an HOA or any kind of restrictions, unless, of course, your adult children are restricting you to that. <laughs> um, but the cons are that it can be very expensive because, again, you are building a modified home to suit your needs, you know, your physical and cognitive needs. Um, you still do have to consider any additional costs for continuing health care if you need that, if you need private in-home care. And the existing home that is currently on the property may need to upgrade their plumbing and electrical in order to accommodate the new building. And then, of course, there's zoning issues. Not every environment, um, not every city, and not every HOA will allow a, a secondary home a unit to be built on the property. So you do need to consider that and take a look at that before you even can, you know, think about uh, beginning the, the project. Next is active adult communities. These are the 55 plus communities that you're probably seeing popping up around. And as I said, there are between 10 and 12,000 people a day turning 65. And that number actually is going to continue until 2030. So we have a nice long decade span of um, the gray market of people getting uh, into that age zone where they are looking to downsize and to make their life a little easier uh, as far as you know home maintenance. So these 55 plus communities are popping up everywhere. I know by me there's at least two new ones being built and I'm talking about within a three mile radius. So that's crazy. I live in a small town but okay. 
So um, the pros to that are amenities like a clubhouse, a pool, um, tennis, uh, events, that kind of thing. My mom-in-law, who is 98, lives in a condo in a 55 plus community. And I can tell you that her activities book that she gets every month is like nice and thick. There are so many things to do, everything from ceramics to wood building to billiards to card games to theater to uh, so much to do in that one community. So uh, of course each community is going to be different but the point is that you can search for ones that accommodate what your interests are. Um, there's no another pro is that there no kids are allowed in these to live in these communities so if you like a nice quiet environment as you grow older then that would be the kind of thing to the kind of place to be here where i live even though there's a lot of right retirees there still are a lot of families as well so you do see and hear a lot of children running around which is nice so just depends on what you like. Um, another pro in a 55 plus or active adult community is you have age appropriate neighbors. You've all been through the same decades and same experiences um, pretty much. And there's no need to maintain any property, which is always a big plus as you grow older, unless you're very much into gardening and doing that. So you do have to look at what your needs and interests are and also what any restrictions you may have. You may want to do gardening, but if you cannot physically or cognitively continue doing that, that's something to be considered. The cons of an active adult community or 55 plus are HOA restrictions. I mean, monthly HOA dues are can be high and they eventually always go up. Maybe not every year, but at some point they do start going up. And homes are generally smaller than what you're used to in a single family home. So you do want to take those into consideration. But, you know, a smaller home could be a pro also if you're looking to downsize. All right. Next type of community is tiny home retirement communities. So the tiny home movement has really grown in popularity in the last few years. And it's like a granny pod, or you even could have a tiny home as a granny pod, but they've moved on now beyond moving, you know, beyond the backyard and going on the road. And, you know, now if you're tired of traveling two, three years with your tiny home around the country or several countries, then you want to settle, you can actually find these tiny home retirement communities. I have a list of them in the article that um, there's a link to in the description below. It, it's, I think that that is only going to keep growing. So the pros for a tiny home retirement community are, of course, you get to stay in your own home. It's much easier to maintain and to clean, and it usually costs less for utilities and taxes and all of that. Um, the cons are that many tiny homes uh, use a compost toilet. So if you're not wanting to use a compost toilet, if you're not into that, then the tiny home may not be the option for you. Uh, of course, tiny homes have very little storage and entertaining in the tiny home, especially during the winter months, may be a bit difficult. But if you're living, uh, if you decide to retire in a tiny home community in one of the northern states, but if entertaining your friends or group of friends is important to you, then this may not be an option uh, for you. Next is RV retirement communities. Very similar to like tiny home communities. The RVs were the original tiny homes and they have very much the same pros and cons. The biggest difference is that the RV retirement, uh, RVs tend to have, um, with the RV parks, they tend to not need to use a compost toilet, you can use a regular toilet. And so that may make the difference between you deciding between a tiny home and an RV home. And nowadays, I know that they have some of the most amazingly beautiful RVs. So you may want to consider that. Um, it's a great way, uh, whether you choose a tiny home or an RV, it's a great way to uh, begin your retirement uh, or begin your senior years with traveling and seeing uh, as much as you can possibly see. But then when you're ready to settle into one place, uh, you can still stay in your same home and just choose a retirement community to move into. So that's kind of cool. All right. Senior villages is the next concept of senior housing. 
This is very interesting because it's fairly new. I think it's about 20, maybe 30 years old. No, I'm going to say 20. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I know we have an article on our website about it, and it was started by a woman, I believe, up in Boston, but definitely up in the Northeast somewhere. And it's a great concept. So here's how it works. You get to stay in your own home. You There's a, a village, which is basically a membership group that is created around you, let's say within a 10, 20 mile radius. And each person that belongs to that membership group, to that senior village, um, pays a little bit of money each month to the group. And that takes care of staff and any, you know, paperwork. It's just like belonging to an HOA. You're creating your own HOA, basically. But you're live, you stay in your own neighborhood. You stay in your own home. And the benefit of it is that because you belong to this group, the group shares their skills amongst each other. So if there's a carpenter in the group, then he will help you if you need carpenter help or a plumber or an attorney or a physician or a nurse or whatever. They help each other in that you know, membership group, in that senior village. So you, you get all the benefits of being in a group but you don't have to physically move to be next door to them or in the same community, you know, physical, geographical community. So it is a great idea. Um, the pros are that, of course, you get to stay in your own home and help is available to you from within the group. The cons are that you do have to pay a monthly fee, although most of them are very nominal, and you staying in your own home may not necessarily be the best option for you. If your home is 60 years old and it's not, not being well maintained, you're not able to maintain it. If it's too much work for you as far as the yard, as far as you know, plumbing, you know, wh whatever needs to be done to it, and the home isn't modified to fit your needs if you're using a walker or a wheelchair, then really staying at home may not be the safest, best option for you. So you do want to take that into consideration, although I know it's very difficult to leave someplace that you've lived in most of your life. But those are issues to take into consideration. All right, the next is senior co-housing. This is an invite, this is a very much like a communal kind of living, like what hippies used to do years ago. So basically you move to a community where there's a central building and that central building has a kitchen and a clubhouse kind of thing and a library and a gym and whatever. Everything occurs in that central building. And then the homes in that community are built around that building. The homes share backyards and gardens. It's very much a communal kind of living. So it's uh, for some, there are even some specific ones now where they're specific for, excuse the car, <laughs> where they're specific for gardeners. So let's say, so if you find a, a senior co-housing community for gardeners, then you would want to move there, or one for artists, or one for engineers, or you know those types of senior co-housing are popping up. So it's very interesting because you're basically moving into with a group of people who are interested in what you're interested in. Um, and of course, if there isn't one, I guess you can, you can create your own senior co-housing community. But anyway, the pros are it's very socially active. So if you're not a socially active kind of person, if you're more of an a introvert and want to be by yourself, then I would not recommend senior co-housing. Um, Built-in help, of course, is available amongst everybody in the group. Um, some communities actually share the utility expenses, so that may be financially beneficial for you. And of course, pets shouldn't be a problem. But again, you're moving into a community, so you need to find out what the rules and regulations are. Um, the cons are not everybody necessarily gets along, uh, so you do want to take that into consideration. And you're part of a team that makes decisions. So it really is like joining an HOA. And if the majority of the group decides on something and you don't think that it's a good idea, you kind of lose out. You have to go along with it because you are part of a team effort um, in that senior co-housing. But it is a very interesting concept, very communal-like living. So if you're an old hippie, you might just like that. <laughs> Not that it's just hippies living in those places. Anyway, residential care homes is the next. 
and um, type of senior co-housing and uh, senior housing. And residential care homes are basically very similar to an assisted living facility, only they're private and much smaller. So a residential care home could have 10, 20 residents or maybe even less. And it, they offer the same amenities that um, an assisted living type of thing does, where they will uh, assist you with some minor activities of daily living, like dressing, if you need, you know, if you need help with dressing, or maybe a little bit of bathing, um, they will help you with that. But you do have your own place, uh, be it a room or an apartment. Um, I very much think of a lot of these residential homes like a bed and breakfast. And the reason is, is because sometimes the bathroom uh, is down the hall. It's not necessarily in your own room. Uh, they do take a lot of these older, large uh, plantation kind of homes or Victorian kind of homes and convert them into a residential care home. Um, but it's smaller. So the pros are that it's friendlier, it's more personalized than an assisted living facility. Meals and housekeeping are provided just like an assisted living, uh, but you're still as independent as much as you can be. You can park your car there, you can still drive if you can still physically drive. Um, the cons are, like I said, there can be shared bathrooms. You don't necessarily have your own private bathroom. You have to research several of these because each one obviously is very different depending on the building that it's built in. Um, you may not have any medical staff in the uh, residential care home, but that's also true for assisted living facilities. So if you anticipate that you may need medical care uh, in the future, you know, even if it's just some light nursing care, then th these types of facilities may not be, you know, good for you. Um, they generally do not accept Medicaid or Medicare. They are private pay. Residential care homes are generally a private pay type of uh, industry. And pets uh, may be a problem because again, you're moving into a group environment and uh, someone else owns that house that you're moving into. So you do want to take that, um, think about that. The next is, of course, assisted living facilities. These are very much, you've seen a lot of these. They're very large usually. They'll have a hundred or several hundred or several thousand residents living in them, depending on how big they are. Um, they offer usually help with assisted, with uh, uh, activities of daily living, like dressing, bathing, that kind of thing. Uh, they normally do have some kind of medical staff, uh, a nurse or a PA, but not all of them. So please check into it before you sign on the dotted line. But they do have um, uh, entertainment and services right there in the building, you know, most of them, at least all the ones that I've ever seen or worked in. Um, but the pros and cons are the same for residential care homes, except that you will have your own apartment and your own private bathroom. And a lot of them come with, they're basically like two rooms. You walk into like a main living room with a little kitchenette, a living area, and then there's a bedroom and a bathroom. So I guess that's technically three rooms. And a lot of them come with a screened in porch as well. I guess depending on where, uh, in, I know in South Florida, a lot of them have screened in porches. So you want to look at them. They're, they can be very expensive, anywhere from you know, $3,000 a month to $8,000 a month, uh, just depending on how fancy they are or how much amenities you get. Um, but that does cover two meals a day and it may cover assisted you know, living. They usually have emergency buttons throughout the, the room. And again, like I said, they offer a lot of uh, leisure activities. Um, maybe not as much as a 55 plus community, but still all of that is contained within the building. Uh, and they are run by a corporation. So you do have uh, that behind you. It's not like a private, like the residential care home, where they may have less funding for some of these amenities. All right. Continuing care communities. These started popping up a few years ago. Um, there is one by me, not too far, like a quarter of a mile, and it's an interesting concept. So a continuing care community is where you move in to a community. You pay a company to take care of you from now until you pass away. Um, you begin 
by moving into a condo or a townhome type of setting. Uh, you know, you're independent, you're, you're fine. It's like a 55 plus type of community. But if it gets to the point where you need to move into an assisted living facility, then you just move into a building within that very same community with assisted living. You don't have to hunt for another one. You don't have to search for one. They're right there. And if perchance you have to move from there to a nursing home, a nursing home is also right in that same community. So in other words, you pay once, you pay at the beginning to live in this community and all these uh, three um, places or types of places are available for you without you having to go outside that one community. Yes, it does mean that you would have to move from your townhouse or condo to another t building, but you're still within the same community. You're not having to go through the process of you know, applying and paying and, and all of that. The pros are is that it's all inclusive. Everything is right there. No matter how your health progresses, you can still stay within the same community and be, um, you know, within with the same, maybe not residents, but, you know, some of the same staff and of course under the same uh, company. And of course, no kids are allowed in these types of communities, so nice and quiet. Um, the cons are though that it can be extremely expensive anywhere from 100,000 to 400,000 plus to just join in, to just go into that kind of community. Um, you are though relying on that company. So if you plan to be in this kind of community for 20, 30 years, the company itself may not last 20, 30 years. So you are kind of putting all your eggs in one basket not quite sure what kind of guarantees they give you when you plunk your check down but you definitely want to find out what you know what will happen if the company goes under or bankrupt or anything could happen uh, so be leery about that and pets of course because you are moving into a community pets may be a problem so think about that and last of course is nursing homes and really the only reason to move into a nursing home is if you need constant medical care. If you cannot take care of yourself at all, if you are, um, have severe dementia or Alzheimer's and your family simply can't take care of you any longer, a nursing home is where you would go for the best type of care. Now I've worked in dozens and dozens of nursing homes and I can tell you there are some great ones and there are some not so great ones. So you definitely want to um, vet them out and I believe a lot of the nursing homes if not all of them will allow you to spend a night or two uh, in there uh, so you can see what it's like to be there all day and all night and that will give you an idea of the staff of the amenities of you know the food uh, the uh, accommodations um, and of course the residents that you'll be surrounded by um, but again, really the only reason to go to a nursing home is if you need continuous care, medical care, um, and you can't afford that, come, someone coming into your home. Well, so these are the 10 senior housing options. I hope they, uh, one of them resounds with you. And of course, there's so many others that uh, will be popping up in the next few years. If you know of any, please let us know and we'll be happy to add them into the article. All right, so don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Click on the thumbs up if you like the video and please comment and let us know what you think of this video, if you have any ideas of any other types of uh, senior living arrangements and we'll, we'll, we will respond. All right, have a great day, stay safe and I'll see you next time.